Hello again, Biology 300 students. Mr. Parker here, and we are taking a look at classification and taxonomy. And this is the screencast session number one, and will be the only one for this particular short mini unit that we're doing. Um, the picture you see here on the right hand side is uh, Carlos Linnaeus, and he's responsible for the modern naming system that we use. And on the left hand side is uh, kind of what he's developed, uh, initially developed, going from life being the most general down to domain, domain, and then moving all the way down to species, which will be the most specific. And we'll get into a little bit of that more as we go into the screencast, okay? Uh, but we're going to start the screencast off with a little video here, and this will give you some background information on the particular topic that we're going to be using. Early in the 18th century, scientists were just coming to grips with the idea that a species could become extinct, it could disappear. And that was sort of a sideshow. The main attraction was the classification and naming of all these newly discovered types of plants and animals. Now back then, they didn't really have a good system for the classification and naming of living things, so a scientist might find a new type of living thing and then just name it whatever he wished making up some unwieldy Latin word. A botanist named Carl Linnaeus straightened things out a bit when he came up with his system for classifying every living thing. Scientists at the time thought it was genius. Linnaeus himself called it the greatest achievement in science. Well, we still use a lot of the Linnaean traditions today, including naming things by their genus and species, the binomial system. You and I are still called Homo sapiens, for example. Now, the Linnaean system was based on the sex organs of plants. So one of his contemporaries, a guy named Johann Siegesbeck, thought this was immoral and offensive. So Linnaeus named a particular plant Siegesbeckia because it was a stinky weed. Today, the science of classifying species has expanded beyond the Linnaean system with information from DNA sequencing and analysis of molecular data, scientists have a new understanding of relationships among species. As a result, modern classification systems advocate categorizing species based on how they evolve, how they fit in the tree of life, a concept that Linnaeus never considered because the theory of evolution by natural selection had yet to be developed. But when it was, many would consider it the greatest discovery in the history of the world. Okay, well welcome back. Hopefully that has given you some background on the naming system that we use. And we're gonna go ahead and, this is the time you wanna go ahead and grab out some notes or something to write with and some paper so we can go ahead and jot down a few different things and some more information about the topic. So moving forward from here, First off, we're going to go ahead and define what taxonomy means, okay? And you can see here it's the science of classifying and naming an organism, okay? Uh, so what they're doing is they're looking at the individual organism, and they're going to take it down from the, being the most general, which we look what we look at is the kingdom, all the way down to the most specific, which will be the species, okay? And this is the general order that they're going to use. The one you see here on the left-hand side, okay, um, you can see this is the classification of this particular organism here. Okay, and you can see we start off with the animalia and then we work our way down towards the species, which is the most specific. So this naming system, again, as I had mentioned earlier, was developed by a guy named Carlos Linnaeus. And this is back in the 18th century. Uh, he was a Swedish, a Swedish uh, botanist. Um, you remember we talked about this before, but a botanist is someone that studies plants. Um, he developed this system for naming organisms and it's called the binomial nomenclature. Okay, so it's a two word, okay, again, by meaning, by meaning two, nomial for name, and nomenclature for the naming system that we're using. So it's a, we're going to always be using two words, basically, when we name every particular organism. Okay, so he's the one who's developed uh, the modern one. Uh, they, now from, from his initial development of this, they've taken it to a little bit further extent as in um, looking at not just what the organism looks like, but looking into its DNA, looking into the evolutionary pattern that it's developed um, and to help classify these particular organisms. So to go ahead and um, the proper way to writing these and naming these, okay, for binomial nomenclature, 
it's always written in italics, okay, so if you're typing it, you're going to italicize it. Uh, the first word is capitalized. Uh, the second word is always lowercase. So, for instance, when we're going through this naming system, again, the genus and the species were the, the very two lowest end or the most specific um, on the classification system. So your genus is always capitalized, and your species is always written with a lower case. Okay, so I'll give you a second to copy this down, but I'm going to move on and show you a little example of this, uh, actually naming a couple organisms, all right? So the first one we're going to look, um, kind of show you first, just make sure you get these jotted down, okay? So we're going to go from the kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. You should know these in order, okay? And kingdom being the most, the largest or the most broad, okay, the most general term, and then getting down to the most specific, which would be the species or the smallest, okay, um, place, um, classification that we're looking at, okay? So again, the kingdom's kind of the all-encompassing one, and then getting to the species, which would be the specific organism that we're looking at. So, for example, the grizzly bear, okay, you can see the grizzly bear up here, this is the one we're naming, is um, it started in the Animalia kingdom. It goes down to the Chordata, Mammalia, Carnivora, and then all the way down to the particular species that it follows underneath. Okay? So you can see it here, it starts on very broad, I don't know what type of organisms fall underneath it, and it gets very specific eventually down to the species when we're talking about that particular organism. Okay? And this will um, get us down to the point of being able to compare, you know, that the different, you know, the different classes and different phylums and different orders, and then they also kiss, uh, basically share some characteristics as we go down, and eventually getting to the point where you get to the specific organism. Okay, and then um, if we're going to take a look at us, okay, or the humans, this one's kind of going the opposite direction, moving our way upwards. So here's your kingdom. Where, again, this is the most broad. And obviously, we fall underneath the animalia or the animal kingdom. And then we work our way all the way up from uh, the phylum would be chordates, okay, uh, mammals, primates, hominids, homo, and then homo sapiens. So our naming us as humans, okay, that's the common name, but the scientific name would be homo sapiens. And the homo would be the genus, and sapiens would be the species. And you should notice here that homo is uh, written with capitalized. Okay, like we should do that. And sapiens being the species is written in lower case. Okay? So you can see that it's a good example. Now, just remember that this is a little bit opposite of the other one we looked at. The most broad is on the bottom and we go into the most specific on top. All right, um, and then to continue on with this system, uh, we're going to look at the, uh, what we call the five kingdom system. A lot of you probably have been introduced to these ideas a little bit before. Um, we have the Monera, the Protista, the Fungi, the Planta, and the Animalia. Okay. These are the five naming of the system. Um, some systems you might see actually be named um, six systems um, that you might see. Um, what they do, this, this is the bacteria, Chimonera okay, or bacteria. There's two different types of bacteria. There's your archibacteria and your eubacteria. Some textbooks you read will break this actually into two separate categories of system uh, uh, classifications um, because of the bacteria are so different. Okay. But for our sake, we're going to keep them together. And we're just going to go through each one of these real quickly. Um, just look at some of the common characteristics of each and give you a picture of each one so you have an idea of what each one looks, at, looks like. So, first one is the Monera. Okay? And again, this is your um, bacteria. These are, uh, there's two different types. There's your archibacteria and your eubacteria. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, that some of the books will use, break this into its own uh, separate, uh, separate kingdoms. So sometimes they have the U bacteria and the R bacteria as two separate kingdoms. Uh, we're going to keep Monera together. Okay, so there's some basic categories about our characteristics. You have their unicellular bacteria, um, they're prokaryotic. And if you remember, prokaryotic means they do not have a defined nucleus, uh, and unicellular meaning a single celled organism. Okay, uh, these particular organisms could be mobile, they could be moving. Uh, you see a couple pictures here of some of these type of single celled organisms. Very primitive. These are what we're looking at. You know, the first type of organisms that were found on Earth. Uh, very simple. Okay? They do every that one cell does everything for that organism. Okay. Uh, the second one is the Protista. Um, these are mostly multi or unicellular, um, and these are eukaryotic. So again, eukaryotic meaning that they do have a, a defined nucleus that contains the DNA. Okay, and you can see here we have some. Um, Amoebas and paramecium uh, that could fall underneath this particular one, um, 
that we're looking at the protest. All right. Uh, fungi, looking at the third kingdom. Okay, these are multicellular. Okay, so again, many celled, eukaryotic, and non and non mobile. Okay, they're not moving. Uh, they're attached usually to something. Um, and these uh, organisms, uh, a lot of you have seen and know what fungi are, right? Um, but these are just a couple of different examples of that. All right, the uh, fourth kingdom is the plant kingdom, multicellular, eukaryotic, and autotrophs, okay? Autotrophs mean they produce their own food, and we know that plants do photosynthesis, and so they are, um, and your plants are necessarily not mobile, right? And um, a couple examples, I don't think I need to really give you one, but here's a couple examples. Um, we know they do, they're, they're again, considered autotrophs because they produce their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Okay, and the last kingdom is the Animalia kingdom. Okay, uh, we're looking at multicellular, eukaryotic, and now we have a term called heterotrophs. And heterotroph just means uh, they, they cannot produce their own food, so you have to consume their own food. Okay, either getting into drinking something, eating something. Uh, that's how we get to, uh, us as humans get our nutrients and other animals is that we have to consume other uh, particular types of organisms um, in order to get the nutrients that we do need. Okay, so in the screencast, um, this is classification and taxonomy. We looked at the uh, seven different um, parts of a classification system that um, Carlos Linnaeus developed, uh, going from the kingdom, phylum, class, order, genus, and species, and going all the way down to uh, looking at the five kingdom system that uh, going through the, you know, going from the Monera all the way down to the animals, which is the most complex. Okay, so again, this is screencast number one and only one for classification and taxonomy.